What's up Thrashers and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel and I am here for the retro review of the week. I promised I would do a retro review for this week to kind of close out doing proper reviews for 2021 and I thought to myself as I was thinking about what album to talk about in terms of a retro review it was getting difficult for a little bit trying to decide okay What's an album I really, really, really love that I would like to do a retro review on? But then the more I thought about it and thought about this, it's like, okay, the choice is now fairly easy. Granted, I'm a month late to this one, however, better late than never, as 30 years ago, late November, early December of 1991, a very special album near and dear to my heart was released and I'm here to give it its due diligence. I, of course, am talking about the classic, underrated classic, debut album from one of my all-time favorite death metal bands, Broken Hope, and their album, Swamped and Gore. So, I've been wanting to do a review of something for Broken Hope for a long time now. Hell, I've even... Hell, you might see an album ranking of Broken Hope and maybe one of the next uh, album ranking videos that I will be doing. Might be about Broken Hope, you never know. But I've wanted to cover this band on this channel for quite a few years now, considering some of you subscribers of mine that's been around for a while know how much I love this band and a brief little history lesson leading up to this album. So Broken Hope formed out of Gurney, Illinois, suburb of Chicago, in 1988 by guitarist Jeremy Wagner, drummer Ryan Stanek, and vocalist, may he rest in peace, Joe Fichek. These two started the band and had a couple other members come in and out for a bit until for this lineup they picked up Ed Hughes on bass and lead guitarist Brian Griffin. Not that one. So, as this lineup was solidified the year prior in 1990, they were putting out demos as well as playing festivals such as the Day of Death Festival in 1990 along with several other huge death metal bands like Death and Pestilence and Monstrosity and Suffocation among many others playing Day of Death in 1990. So because of the success of their performance at that festival they came together to uh, Wave Digital Studios in Gurney, Illinois, which they would record, and this would be the first death metal album to be recorded under digital format, as prior to this it was always about the analog tapes and stuff. Here they went digital, but here for Swamped and Gore, their debut album, they decided to take the production route away from it sounding too polished with the digital style, Bring it back to a more primitive style, more raw, a little bit lo-fi. Not as raw and lo-fi as their next album, Bowels of Repugnance, but still raw enough and gritty enough to still sound like human beings playing. So, as far as the album itself goes, I mean, this is a forgotten album within the world of death metal, and we're going to go into why song by song. So, a quick little 45-second introduction, bore. Uh, I can never pronounce this right. Boriv, Borivho's Demise? If somebody can tell me how the hell do you pronounce that, please tell me. Fun little groovy 45 second introduction track into the real opener, Incinerated, which just comes in straight out of nowhere with grindy blast beats and grindcore-esque riffing before it just goes into some great... Uh, meat and potatoes riffs with double bass going off, and even a memorable breakdown around the halfway point of the track. After all, Broken Hope, I've always considered him to be a forgotten pioneer of brutal death metal, because a lot of people want to give all the credit to bands like Suffocation for creating brutal death metal. I think Broken Hope deserved just as much credit, to me at least. And Incinerated certainly showcases that type of brutal death metal where you get extreme grindcore inspired blast beats but with a nice groovy mid-tempo breakdown to me that is two of the best things brutal death metal offers is great breakdowns and crazy blast beats 
and incinerated to kick things off definitely showcase that in a big way then it goes into the longest track of the album at six and a half minutes which i think as i'm scrolling on my list here is still the longest song broken hope has ever recorded at six and a half minutes the title track swamped in gore and i love the little drum intro that kicks things off as it gets into this like really chuggy riff to kick to really get things going and then it slows down a little bit into um almost doom territory not really it's more like uh how how would i describe it kind of like a pantera groove not so much in like the riffing but in just the tempo and the the beats it gets into like a pantera-esque kind of groove and it just naturally grooves along and it's catchy riffs the vocals my god i'll talk more about the vocals when i get into the overall synopsis of the album at the end and then after it goes through like the grooves and it gets into the chorus the speed picks up just a little bit a little bit more with the classic quote of joe saying swooped in gore my terrible impression of doing guttural vocals um but yeah then the song kind of goes in and out of getting a little bit speedy not really like in a thrash metal sense and then back to the slower groove oriented stuff and the like i said these riffs on this song really stick in your head then again there's a lot of like stick to your head type of riffs and i'll touch on more of those as we continue on into bag of parts which was about six minutes long kind of keeping that groove going and in fact i think this has even more groove in my opinion than the title track and the bass the bass has a lot of moments of shine on this track it playing along to the main guitar riff and i love how when it starts it gets into like with the beats it's like and then crazy double bass work going which i really love when drums have a lot of room to breathe to be able to do more things like that and this album ryan stanick really shines as a underrated drummer who we've lost in the past six years and bag of parts lyrically speaking you know all about carrying bags full of body parts because i mean when, when you read the lyrics to the songs like this you gotta realize jeremy wagner is a crazy maniac when it comes to writing lyrics kind of like in the same vein of like cannibal corpse lyrics like it's all about gore and killings cannibalism zombies all kinds of crazy fucking shit and then after Bag of Parts, we get into one of the highlights of the album and one of the shortest songs of the album, the second shortest, had a little over 2 minutes, 15 seconds, Dismembered Carcass. And again, it starts off with this more kind of grindcore approach, especially with the blast beats and the riff before it gets a bit thrashy and then it settles back into that more groovy mid-tempo stuff throughout the rest of the track. And also lyrically probably some of the most insane lyrics for them at the time and joe's vocals god bless him god god rest his soul i mean he just brings forth these ultra low gutturals and then he somehow manages to outdo him by going even lower at at one point and yeah, this track was kind of like a, like I said, a mixture of that kind of grindy approach on a couple of parts and that more groove laden tempo that's going on throughout. With a little hint of thrash at one point in the track, which certainly added more to the song overall. Devour of Souls, I think it's one of the band's most known songs, as it's more or less a more straight up meat and potatoes death metal track with a little hints of melody coming in and then again broken up despite my opinion that they're a forgotten pioneer of brutal death metal they're also capable of bringing in some melody into the music mostly in the guitars and this song has a little bit of melody kind of creeping along and also just more of those grindy blast beats and i like the transitions where it goes from like the grindcore style 
blast beats into the double bass groove going on throughout all the different parts of this song. But then after that, we get into my favorite track of the album, Awakened by Stench, which continues that vibe, that formula of going from grindy blast beats into a catchy groove. But that final breakdown in the last 90 seconds or so is one of the best breakdowns I have ever heard in death metal history. Like, holy shit, that, if you do not headbang to that breakdown, something the fuck is wrong with you. Gore Hog being the shortest song of the album at a little over two minutes. Kind of similar to Incinerated, where it's mostly involving this kind of grindcore influence with the blast beats and the riffs. But then it does get broken up by some more mid-tempo, slowed-down sections. Goblin the Guts, which is the second longest song at almost six and a half minutes. This is another pretty famous one from Broken Hope, and this one... This is when you get a little bit more melody coming in, especially in the guitar solos. Like, I think Brian does the first solo. Jeremy, who's not known for doing guitar solos, he's more the riff master of the band. He's playing a cool solo. I think the better solo towards the end of the track during the uh, breakdown. And then Cannibal Crave, starting off with a great with great melodic riffs before it gets into more of that meat and potatoes, death, groovy, death metal. Same with the closing track, Claustrophobic Agnostic Dead. More meat and potatoes, groovy, death metal. And that's really all you could ask for from a band like Broken Hope, is just to can put out a great death metal album that has moments of brutality, moments of melody, and catchiness, and great hooks. So yeah, overall, yeah, like I said, the production, very raw, very lo-fi, despite it being a digital recording. Joe Fichek's vocals, I think in terms of vocal vocalists and death metal, he, in my opinion, is a top five guy. I think a lot of people, when it comes to when people make lists of, like, the greatest death metal vocalists of all time, I think a lot of people tend to sleep on Joe Fichek, because he was a true pioneer of the super low guttural vocals. Like, he was able to do, like, the, what John Tardy and Martin Van Drennen do with the gutturals with the tongue to their teeth, but instead of going high like they do, he went to the absolute lowest depths you could imagine. And without him, would you have had vocalists come around at the same time like Lord Worm? Or even guys like Matty Way from Disgorge? Probably not, because Joe was a true pioneer of that style. Not Chris Barnes, Joe Fichek. And as far as the riffs, like I said, great catchy meat and potatoes riffs going on. Some moments of grind, little bits of thrash here at times. Mostly groove oriented, as well as some solid melodies that show up as well now the one complaint i have about with the production or actually the two complaints i have with the production it's a little quiet at times and then when it comes to the blast beat sections the guitars do get a little bit lost in the shuffle like you can barely hear the guitars during the uh blast beat sections of some of these songs but aside from those complaints, this is a fucking phenomenal album. And to me, Broken Hope, despite their 10-year hiatus from 2002 to 2012, they've been one of the forgotten masters of death metal for a long time. And I think for death metal fans who have never listened to Broken Hope, definitely give this album a listen. And check out their other albums, because I think their other albums are really good in their own right, too. Maybe not so much Grotesque Blessings, but that's another story for another time. But anyways, that's my review of a album that's reached its 30-year anniversary. Until next time, which my next video will be the top 30 albums of 2021. Oh my god, that's gonna be brutal. But anyways, until then, horns high, and I will see you soon. I do not want candles! Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Wow. laughs> just Levi Christmas getting candles. Stop candy. it! I don't want candles! Ten candles? I'm wrecking myself. Screw that.
myself going to a Christmas department store and just hearing someone over in the other aisle, I do not want candles! <laughs> wow, I have had a brain fart. I do not want candles! Okay. Never forget. I do not want candles! Dick's toy. No! Ten printers, are you kidding me? This is the worst! Uh, I hate you! I do not need candles! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see that as like a Metallica song. I did Again. not want cat. <laughs> <laughs>